All right. Rangers Capitals recap. So these two games were nearly identical. So the Rangers are coming off the 9 nothing amazing game against the Flyers. And now going to Washington, a team that they're 2-0 against this year. Washington is in first place in the division and on a winning streak. They went into these games on a 16 winning streak. Tom Wilson, they'd won each game during Tom Wilson's seven-game suspension. Wilson would serve that last game in the first game. He would play in the second game. These were back-to-back -back nights in Washington. And the lineup was the same as it had been for the Flyer game, meaning no Julian Gauthier. You couldn't really change the lineup off the 9-0 win. Also, same coaching staff as well. So David Quinn and Co. still out for a COVID, uh, excuse me, COVID protocol. And so it was Chris Knobloch, Gordon Murphy, and Chris Drury behind the bench. Uh, we'll see moving forward what the deal is, whether Quinn will be back. But that's a story for another day. And so the goaltender would be Alexander Georgiev in the first game. And then Keith Kincaid for the second game for the Capitals. Vitek Vanacek for the first game, Ilya Samsona for the second game. So a lot of themes, I would say, continued in these games. And that is really solid defensive play and really good penalty kill. What also continued, for the most part, not really scoring enough goals, and I know they scored the nine against the Flyers, but just in general, they're not really getting enough scoring production, in my opinion. And the power play has failed them for the most part. And then also, not being able to protect the lead in close games. All of these things continued. Again, with the Rangers, you're going to get some wins. You're going to get some losses. That's how it's going to be. In this division, really, and I know that, you know, the Rangers are going to be facing a Sabre team Monday who's on a 13-game losing streak. But generally speaking, they're a team that can really beat anyone or they can lose to anyone. You just don't know what you're really going to get. But there are some consistent themes, like I said. So the Rangers really, for the most part, got off to a pretty good start last night, the, the Friday game. And, you know, not a whole lot going on in the first period. And then they get a power play, and they do score. It was a goal by, of course, Artemi Panarin. Beautiful pass by Ryan Strom. And Adam Fox sets the other assist. And those players are playing well again. Panarin... What can you say? The guy is tremendous on this team. I mean, the Rangers don't even deserve him. He He's so good. It's unbelievable. I mean, the argument can be made that he is certainly, you know, a top five player in this game. No worse than top 10. I mean, he was an MVP finalist last year, and he was out nine games this year. But from a point-per-game basis, he's only behind McDavid and Drysaddle. Just the guy is a wizard. So Panera gets a power play goal. Things are looking good. And... To be honest, the first two periods were excellent. The Rangers played a very good first two periods. They were controlling play, the better team, I would say. And Georgiev wasn't really tested. But where the game was lost, I felt like this was going to be a big test, the third period, where, again, especially when they're up by one, it, it feels like it was definitely a problem earlier in the season. I can think back to those Penguin games in particular where they just couldn't hold the lead. And they had a couple of power plays, one early in the third where they had a couple of good chances, didn't score. Then another power play with about eight minutes left or so, and they did not score. It didn't look good on it. And then what do you know, two goals within three or four minutes of each other, one with about seven minutes left or so, and the other one with maybe like four or five thereabouts. And Ovechkin gets both of them camped in front, and both goals were... Taken from shots where Ovechkin normally is on that left wall. One-time shots, you know, and Georgiev was kind of, you know, too far out of his net upon getting the shot, and there was a rebound, and Ovechkin kind of cleaned it up both times. To me, there were similar-looking goals, and the fourth line, Howden, Rooney, and Lemieux were on for both goals. So not a great look by them. Again, you could blame the defensemen who were in front there, but that was it. Capitals score two big goals, and the Rangers show nothing uh, when the goalie's pulled. The Rangers have to be one of the worst teams in the league. When it's six on five, they get nothing going. It's really bad.
And that's been the case now for a while, I feel like. And yeah, I understand they're probably a little bit demoralized, but they just got no chances. So yeah, Rangers played really well. And I think some blame goes to Georgiev. It has to, not all blame. And really the power play let them down. Even though the one goal they had was a power play goal, they really you know, needed to have that killer instinct. And I think if they had gotten that second goal good chance they probably win that game. So they get no points. And it's just another example of this season where the Rangers are just not great at getting points. And I know the 9 nothing game certainly skews things, but even if it hadn't been the case, you know, they have more losses than wins overall. And their goal differential is about, you know, somewhere in that plus 8, plus 9, plus 10 range. So this is a team that really, to me, it's just not very clutch. That's a big problem with them. It's not a bad team, but they, they need to find ways to win, and they don't always do it. And it's a lot of up and down. So, tonight's game, Kincaid and Nett, like I said, Samsonov for the Caps. And early on, I, I felt like the Capitals had a little bit of the better play, a little bit. And off of a Zibanejad, at the end of the first period, towards the end, off a Zibanejad face-off win, Fox gets the puck, moves up, finds Buchnevich, who scores. So, beautiful pass by Fox. Buchnevich continues to produce. Again, the guy looks like a different player this season. It's been gradual, I'd say. It's not like it came out of nowhere, but really, just, you know, basically a point-per-game player this season. So, Rangers take a one nothing lead. You know, I should also say that Mika Zimanejab looks better. Definitely looks better in these games. And also, you need to break up that kid line. Because Lafreniere, Hedel, Kako, just not doing anything. Nothing's happening from that line. So, in theory, it was fun, but it's they're all way too young. There's just nothing going there. So, I think an easy switch to me would be Blackwell doesn't need to be playing with Panarin and Strom. So, you get Blackwell off there. Maybe you throw Kako on there. There's ways to switch it up. And then once Vitaly Kraftsov comes, that's a whole other set of questions. And we'll see what happens then. But, yeah. You really want to see some more from the young kids. There's no question. So Rangers play a pretty solid second. And, you know, Kincaid wasn't really tested. So they're up one nothing. I know the Rangers are the type of team to win a one nothing type of game. And sure enough, the Capitals tie it. They don't really learn from those mistakes. About six minutes in, John Carlson scores. Ties it up at one. And you're thinking, here we go again. They're going to go from leading after two to getting no points, and it seemed like that was a distinct possibility. The Capitals would even have a power play, but the Ranger penalty kill continues to amaze. I believe it's a top three unit in the league. I mean, if you had told me that our power play would be as bad as it is and our penalty kill would be as good as it is, I, I would not have believed that. I mean, And that's credit to the coaching staff and the personnel for really getting better in that PK department. But the Caps would, keep, would be swarming. Kincaid would make some good saves. And eventually, with two and a half minutes left in the third, Brendan Dillon turns the book over to Mika Zibanejad, who scores. Zibanejad, I don't want to say he's back, but you're seeing him finally coming through. There's more jump to his game. The The puck skills are getting better. Still not great on the one-timer, but just like his shot. You know, he roofed it. And it's funny, this was against Ilya Samsonov, and the only other time since Sona faced the Rangers was last year when Zibanejad had his historic five-goal night. So it kind of ends in a similar fashion with Zibanejad scoring against Samsonov, giving them a 2-1 lead. And then an empty net goal for Brett Howden at the end. Brett Howden's first goal of the season. He hadn't scored in 34 games. So Howden with a little tap in. And you know, maybe that'll get him... You know, some confidence again, you know, really offensively, he's, you know, gotten worse each year. But, you know, I guess nice to see him get on the score sheet. And in terms of potential changes next game, it's just Sturkin. I, I don't know what's up with him. And, you know, it seems like he's close, but I, I wouldn't be too sure. So we'll see who's in goal against Buffalo. Uh, to me, I think, I know they won this game, but an easy change for me would be, I, I think you got to put Gauthier in for Lemieux. Lemieux took a penalty late. He's just not bringing a whole lot to the table, whereas at least Howden is a key penalty killer. So to me, uh, that's the move I'd make. Go Shea for Lemieux. Although, upon thinking about it, 
I guess I wouldn't be surprised if, if Blackwell gets scratched. It seems like the coaching staff, like, they don't mind putting him in the top six, but I guess they feel like maybe, like, it's not worth having him on the fourth line. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, again, to me, this is a situation where it's kind of the same old, same old, but they're playing pretty good hockey, pretty smart hockey. Um, but themes continue, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Buffalo is a team coming to the Garden. They're on a 13 losing streak. They fired Ralph Kruger. It'll actually be Dan Girardi as one of the assistant coaches for Buffalo. So it will be interesting to see him behind the bench. But it's a game of the Rangers. You don't want to lose. You just don't want to be that team that loses to snap their losing streak. So to me, it's more that. So they should be certainly coming out with an attitude of, you know, we can't let up. And with the Rangers, sometimes against worse competition, we've seen their play has dipped. And they're in no position to be doing that. So we'll see what happens. Rangers State NHL 500. And I'll talk to you soon.